further down the estuary in Arnsdeer Penfluk, um, we can see that we've got in a high intertidal zone here um, the growth and colonization of the mudflats by uh, salt marsh vegetation. And if we have a look at this, this vegetation, we can see that it's especially adapted to live in this type of environment. Um, they need fresh water to survive, but the way they do it is by excluding the salt from the saline water from the estuary. And the leaves are specially developed uh, to be really fleshy to retain the, salt uh, the fresh water that they manufacture. So um, particular types of plants um, have adapted to living in this intertidal environment. And they, the fact that they can tolerate salt um, gives them the name um, of halophytic plants. So it's a salt tolerating plants. Um, they colonize the upper parts of the estuary in the intertidal zone um, where they have sufficient exposure to air in order to, to photosynthesize and to exchange gases and so on. Um, too far down in, in, in the intertidal zone and, they, and the, the soil is too waterlogged, um, they, they, the leaves would be uh, submerged too much for them to survive. So they, they only cling and survive around the fringes of the estuary in the very high intertidal zone. Now having said that, there are different species that colonize different um, levels within the, within the intertidal zone. This particular one um, is living high up, but as we go down you get different uh, species uh, in, uh, living at, at lower levels. They can tolerate uh, a little bit more salinity, a little bit more, little bit more submergence. And so you have a vegetation zonation on salt marshes leading down to the mudflat uh, and into the, into the channels. Um, the salt marshes, um, once the vegetation colonizes the, the, the muddy surface, they actually accelerate in their growth. And that's because the plants um, very effectively trap uh, mud and other sediments that are held in suspension by the tidal currents. So as the tidal currents flood during the flood tide onto these vegetated surfaces, the vegetation itself slows down the tidal current, causing the mud and the clay and the silt to drop out of suspension uh, and to be deposited around the roots and the, and the stems and the, uh, and the branches of the saltmarsh veg vegetation. This of course accelerates uh, deposition and so the salt marsh, once it's colonized the surface, can actually promote a very rapid growth and accumulation of salt marsh sediment upward. Um, and so it gradually gets higher and higher in the, in the tidal frame. And if um, that proceeds uh, uninterrupted, it can actually lead to the surface becoming what the French call terrestrialized here, um, whereby uh, fresh water plants can start to colonize um, and it becomes uh, a land, a terrestrial environment rather than a salt, uh, salt water environment. Uh, but that's at the end of the cycle. But there are amazing um, uh, habitats used by birds and other, uh, uh, other intertidal uh, invertebrates, crabs and so on. Um, and we'll be talking about their geomorphology uh, a bit later on.